everyone, welcome to Cactus Cafe. My name is Anna. Today I will be showing you my entire collection of cactus, aloes, haworthias, and other uh, desert plants that I grow here in my backyard. So I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. As I am fil filming this right now, it is uh, the end of May, start of June. So it is the end of almost the end of spring and we are approaching the much dreaded summer here in las vegas so this is my backyard setup they're pretty much everywhere my plants are everywhere so during spring summer and uh, fall all my cactus and my plants are outside in my backyard so i have a little group of uh, plants in this section i have all my epiphytes or orchid cactus hanging underneath the tree i have a little table over there and i have some of them on that rack and then i also have a group right here and oh and my mini desert garden is actually against the wall right there so later on i will be giving you a tour of that garden and actually i also have a little patch of garden right there at the back behind that grill so i have a few cactus growing there in the ground as well so i will be showing that to you and then i also have this lit oh, this one rack right here so this is shaded so anything that needs a bright shade is in this area mostly haworthias so for the sake of this video, I tried grouping my plants according to genus, cactus genus. But I must admit, it is not always this organized in my backyard because the way I arrange them is um, according to how the sun shines in my backyard. So right now, we have uh, shade cloths already set up, uh, getting ready for summer. But um, the way I organize my plants in my backyard is according to how the sun shines on them and also the wind. I take into consideration the wind factor because here in the desert, we do get a strong winds like wind gusts. So anything that is top heavy, I try not to put them um, on top, but uh, rather they are all in the ground. So anyway, let's get this tour started. So on the left section of my backyard, this is where I keep my Rebutia, Sulco Rebutia, Parodia, among other cactus that I have here. Now this section doesn't have a shade cloth on top of it, but it does benefit from the effect of the pergola. So as the sun shines on top, it does get that alternate sunshade, sunshade effect from the slats of the wood. So this part right here, these are my rebutia. So rebutias usually they're round and they form clumps. So this section right here, they are known for their flowers. They're the flowers are small, but they when they flower, they are very prolific. So they tend to cover the entire cactus itself. So this one, the flowers are not fully opened yet. This is a rebutia full biseta. But um a little in a few minutes or hours as the sun shines it will start opening up all those flowers okay so this one right here this has a pretty pink flower um, every year this does a super bloom for me and this one is interesting because this is a rebutia that i grew from seed two years ago so now i see buds forming on it i don't know what type of rebutia this is because when I bought it, it's a mixed rebutia seed pack. So this is the one that grew very fast and I see buds right now. So it is exciting to see what the flowers would be like. So this is the first time I have a seed grown cactus that will flower for me. I am not exactly sure what the difference is between a rebutia and a sulco rebutia. But both of them have rather small but colorful and attractive flowers on them. So this is another clumping rebutia. This is a Donaldiana. 
this section right here are my lobivia. I think lobivia right now is uh, classified also under echinopsis. Um, they keep changing the classifications and the name so it's getting confusing but yeah sometimes you would still buy them under the name lobivia sometimes it says echinopsis so the lobivia flowers they are not as prolific bloomers as rebutia are but the flowers are bigger so when they open even if even though you just have a few on your cactus they are big so they tend to cover your cactus as well so this one right here, Lobivia rightiana, this did not flower for me last year because it suffered from mealy bugs. But I am happy to see buds now forming. So that means it has fully recovered from um, its mealy bug inf infestation and it's now ready to give me some flowers once more. Down here I have a couple more Lobivia. This is Lobivia Hybrid Blaze. And then moving on to this shelf right here, these are my Camelobivia. So they are a cross between a Camacereus uh, cactus, the traditional peanut cactus, and a Lobivia. So as you can see, their uh, feature, it's a mixture of the small peanut cactus, which uh, doesn't grow longer than this usually, and a uh, Lobivia, which grows a lot bigger and a lot taller so that's a cross between a Camacereus and a Lobivia. So some of them are already done blooming. This is a very nice flower. This is a Mardi Gras. I think somebody told me that is the name of this one and this is the more common one. This is a rose quartz cactus. Now moving on to the right section, this is the part where I keep all my parodias. Now I'm glad I did this video and I was forced to arrange my cactus because I did not realize how much parodias I have in my collection. So I think this is one of the genus in the cactus that I have a lot of. So many of them have yellow flowers. So they bloomed early for me so this there's still one here left so a lot of them have yellow flowers although they can also have different colors of flowers like this one down here they have orange i think this is the horse di parodia so this has orange flowers this is the ube ubel manianus which has purple flowers okay and then more here more yellow ones this has a red orange flower and let me see yeah so i think that's uh all the color of parodias i have this one is said to have a pink flower but i it hasn't flowered for me so i'm not sure if it will turn out pink but that's what the description said this is a balloon cactus and this is another parodia with purple flower and this is the Lenning House CI. Now this bud right here formed fall of last year but it did not develop but it's still hanging on. I'm not sure if it will still bloom but um, there's three buds on the top forming. So parodias, you have to give them a lot of sun for you to get good flowers and for you to get the flowers to open it also has to be under full sun or they would only be half closed like this one so probably later on in the day when this section gets the full sun or if i move this to um, a bright sun full sun position it will open up its flowers so that's just one tip on parodias if you want to see the flower open fully Put them under full sun. Hi there, Shadow. Are you guarding my cactus? Yes, you are doing a good job. <laughs> okay, so over here, this is where I keep mostly Trichocereus and Opontia um, genus, although I have a few that's different also in this section. 
so those that you see with pads those are all apantias different types of apantias so this is trichocereus 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 except for this one this is um helianthocereus poco i've had this for years it just keeps growing but has never flowered yet okay i hope someday it will now this is a saguaro okay that's a saguaro and so is this little one so i have two saguaros this section here these are all apontias so this that one is a variegated apontia or the apontia sunburst and then i have yellow bunny ears the white bunny ears a monstrous type of bunny ears right there uh cylindro pontias here in front and then uh, that's a baby santa rita at the back so that's pretty when it's uh winter it turns all purple and then in the summer it turns green again and i have the miniature one hiding down over there Now these two right here are growing very very fast so I'm keeping them in their tiny pot because I have no space for them but they are really growing very fast. So as this one, this is an Eve's needle crest, uh, Eve's needle cactus. Let me move back so you can see it. As you can see it is growing very fast as well. I've had it in that pot for three years now I know it needs to be replanted but I am not doing that yet because this can grow into a tree guys if you have this one and you put it in the ground or in the pot it can grow into a tree and interesting is that this one is the crested form of the of this one so this is a crested eaves needle cactus and this is the regular one And then this are these three are miniature pencil chola. This is an apontia that I grew from seeds. So it grows, it germinates slow, but once it germinates, it grows very, very fast. This is two years old. Actually, I have three ba big ones of that type of apontia planted in the ground. So I just wanted to see if I can grow them from seed and I did. But now I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> but I'm just keeping them for now. These rack right here, these are just assortments of seedlings that uh, I am growing. Either seedlings or cuttings that I am growing. So I will not be showing each and every one of them to you because it'll take so much time but like for this one these are two saguaro saguaro seedlings and in here i have my lithops whatever survived at least so i like lithops but i don't think the feeling is mutual so that's all that i have left but i just keep trying and so i have three levels here so this rack uh doesn't really get much direct sunlight so it's more of bright sunlight always in this rack so this is like my little propagation and seedling rack so the bottom rack right here is where i keep my succulents my leafy succulents i don't have many because i don't seem to have good luck or much luck growing them but these are the ones that survived so far this one it is called a vix plant so actually this is a hitchhiker in one of the cactus i think that i bought and i let it grow and if you rub your hand on it it's called a vix plant because if you rub your finger on it and then you smell your finger it smells it has a eucalyptus or a minty smell to it it really smells like vix so i really really like this succulent and it's also very hardy it can tolerate our heat here in vegas although i keep this in a bright shade position but it's very very hardy and easy to propagate and then um this is my little jade collection i wasn't planning on collecting jade but in time you know people 
give me jade so I ended up having a little collection of it. This is the Crassula Lemon Lime Jade. And then this is the jade that I propagated to waste. I made a video on that. So I propagated it in water and in soil. So I put them all in there and it is still alive. <laughs> and then a few more right here. This is uh, the jade that Daz of Cacti Mania gave me. And then this is the Gollum jade, the elephant bush, and a few more right here. And then this is the succulent arrangement that I did more than a year ago. And as you know, succulents in time, they grow taller or become leggy. So what I did is I cut off the succulents. I cut them down and everything that was in that pot, I just stuck them back in here all together. So some of these are still rooting. Oh, I did not even notice that this one has is flowering. So anyway, so all of them are in there. Um, I just uh, cut them back so they'll min it'll maintain its shape. Okay, now we're moving on to my Echinopsis collection. So Echinopsis is one of the biggest genus. And I must admit, I really did wait for this day before I filmed my Echinopsis collection because I wanted to show you guys some of its flowers. So this is... Um, one characteristic of uh, the Echinopsis genus, they have very showy flowers. So I am fortunate today to have uh, several of my Echinopsis in flower. So unfortunately, I do not know the exact name of this Echinopsis. Call them by their color. So this is a pink Echinopsis and I have a peach ones in here. If you remember this bowl, this is the Echinopsis bowl arrangement that I did um, a few months or weeks ago. This is the one that had so many pops on it and I depopped it and planted those separately. So look at it now. It is in flower. So it is very interesting because this one, Echinopsis, this flowered for me last week and the flowers were pink. But now when it flowered again, the flowers are more peach in color. If you can see this one, see it's a little bit pink. So it has two different colors of flowers appearing from it. Or uh, That's very interesting. And then another one there. And I also have one that is cristate form. So when I bought that, it says it's an Echinopsis Cristata or cristate form although it hasn't flowered for me so I cannot really validate if it is an echinopsis or not but that is what the label said now some echinopsis um, have flowers or their flowers open in the morning like this one but some of them are also night bloomers this is echinopsis Mirabilis. This is also a night bloomer. Um, it is very fragrant. Very fragrant. The flowers are a little bit smaller but they are very showy. I will try to attach a picture in here so I can show you. Okay, this is the more common Echinopsis. The Echinopsis Domino which has big white flowers. Very fragrant as well. 